The grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. The first Sunday of a new year and I pray God's blessing upon you and yours as we go forward into the unknown future. Unknown in many circumstances and at many levels but we have the sure conviction that our good and loving God goes before us, the God who has revealed himself supremely in our Lord Jesus Christ. And we remember his coming amongst us still in the Christmas season as we sing together, See in Yonder Manger Low. Friends, in the book of Revelation, we receive a vision of the end of all things when the whole of creation will be renewed and a renewed people will enjoy the perfection and the completeness of what God has done for us. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning or crying or pain any more. For the former things have passed away. Let us pray. God our Father, you have called us to be a people who look forward in faith and in hope. You have called us to trust that though your ways to us may seem unfathomable, still your great purpose is to renew humankind and the whole of creation. 
so that we who are part of the old order of things, mourning, crying, and in pain, can look forward to that time when the voice of Jesus will be heard to say, Now I am making all things new. And the old order will have passed away. Until that time, help us to live as people of the new heaven and the new earth. People who know your renewing touch as we experience forgiveness. People who know your blessing as we ourselves forgive. People who know your love as we respond to those in need. People who have good news to share in the face of mourning, crying and pain. And we pray this in the name of the one who calls us to live in his life, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now let's read together in God's word in the gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 2 and at verse 25. Luke chapter 2 verse 25 and we're reading to the end of verse 38. Mary and Joseph have brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem in obedience to all that the law requires in relation to a newborn son. And they encounter two people in the temple in Jerusalem, Simeon and Anna, people of great faith who were looking forward to the promises of God to his people to be fulfilled in the coming of the Messiah. So we have to picture all of this taking place in the temple in Jerusalem. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. And God will bless us, the reading of his word. May he give us grace to lay hold on his truth. We sing together, Still the Night.
let us pray. The psalmist prayed, Open my eyes, Lord, that I may see wonderful things in your law. Father, we believe that you can guide us to your truth as we focus on your word. And we pray that you will speak to us now in the depths of our being. Settle us in the presence of your Holy Spirit and bring your truth to rest in our depths. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, as we look back on the year 2021, it's inevitable that we would think of it dominated by COVID and the implications for us as individuals and also as a people in the church. It's been a, a difficult time, but we've arrived at this day probably better placed, well, actually better placed than we were a year ago because of the, the vaccine, but still perhaps unsettled by a degree of uncertainty as we go forward into the future, with a new variant of COVID proving to be more infectious, perhaps not resulting in as many severe cases, but again, there's a question mark about that too. So we stand very much in need of hope. We stand very much in need of reassurance that our God goes before us and that whatever our circumstances, his purpose for us is good and it is loving. And if we do feel that sense of uncertainty at present, then we would be very close to the people of Jesus' time, very close to the world into which Jesus was born. Because in Israel at, that, at this time, there was a degree of uncertainty politically because Israel was a subject nation. They were dominated by the Romans. There were restrictions placed upon them by the Romans, which were very unwelcome. But spiritually, the nation wasn't in a very good place because the religious life of the nation had become dominated by legalism. There was a, a cold hand upon the people of faith. And also the temple, which in the past had been such a powerful symbol of God's presence in the midst of his people and was so essential to the faith of the people and what it provided for them, an opportunity for thanksgiving, and the experience of forgiveness through the sacrificial system. All of this had, had been debased in many ways. And the temple no longer had the significance that it had in the past. Something that would trouble Jesus later in his life. For he had a great love for the temple. So together... There was uncertainty provided by the, the secular world and also the, the spiritual world of Jesus' day. But the flame of faith still burned brightly in the midst of, of all of this. God had always promised that in every circumstance there would be a faithful people in Israel. Those who looked to him as the source of all goodness and love and joy. Those who place themselves firmly before his word for their guidance. A people who trusted that whatever the circumstances and whatever aspect of the nation's life, God cherished a good and loving purpose for his people. It may have been a minority that thought in this way, but they were still there. And while they were there, there was hope for the nation. It was to this group of people that Simeon and Anna 
belonged. They knew what it was, like everyone else in the nation, to suffer the restrictions of the Roman oppressors. They were conscious of the spiritual poverty of the nation, but still they waited in faith for God to fulfill the promises that he had made to his ancient people. Now of the two, Simeon and Anna, Simeon is, is probably the one who is most recognisable. But I want to focus on Anna this morning as part of this faithful group of people and to see what she can teach us as we seek that reassurance in going forward into an uncertain future. And the first thing that, that really strikes you about Anna was that she was regarded as a prophetess. Really quite unusual in Israel at the time. She was a woman who received God's word. It's there for us quite plainly in verse 36 of our reading. There was also a prophetess, Anna. She received God's word. Now this word prophet is used quite often of, of people, sometimes quite lightly. You know, politicians can be called prophets, social reformers can be called prophets. I've even heard stand-up comedians being called prophets. You know, what they have in common is they focus on things that are wrong with the world and call upon us to make a change. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But what we have to understand is that in the Bible, a prophet is quite a specific role which people are called to inhabit. And sometimes they're called to, the, the response to that call is very reluctant. But it is a specific role. One scholar has written this about a prophet he or she is one who, having received revelations of the mind and will of God, declares to others what has been thus received. A man or a woman who has received revelations of the mind and will of God and then shares them with the rest of the community. That is a biblical prophet. And... That, that was a role that continued in the early church. There was a recognised office or a, a gift of the Holy Spirit, which was called prophecy. I believe that that diminished within the church as the written word of God became more complete. Because then it was possible for those who preached out of the Bible to say that they were preaching the mind and the will of God. But it was also possible for individual men and women who gathered round the written word to say that they were coming into contact with the mind and the will of God. Whether preaching or focusing in private upon the word, the mind and the will of God was being delivered. And that's something that, that perhaps we, we need to grasp more fully, friends. That although we, we like to be up and doing things, and doing them for the, for the glory of God, we do them better if in the first place we are a receiving people. That we come before God's word as those who need refreshment and strength in order to deliver the witness that we would that we regard as being our fulfillment as Christians. So we learn from Anna about receiving the word, but also we learn from her with regard to her commitment to worship. We are told that she never left the temple. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Now, some people have said that it was, in fact, possible 
for someone like Anna to actually live in the temple. But others have suggested that what's being said here is something that's said about people that we might know. It might be said about ourselves. You know, he or she, oh, they're never away from the church. And that may well have been the case with Anna. She was totally committed to gathering with God's people in the temple. But that went along with a very disciplined devotional life because we're told that she was committed to prayer and to fasting. These were individual disciplines that she regarded as being central to her being. You know, in the, the past year, many people have shared with me the frustration of not being able to, to gather together as, as God's people because of the restrictions that were placed upon us. But on the other hand, others have said to me that there has been a renewal in their own personal devotional life. You know, that they've experienced a, a deeper commitment to, to prayer and to meditation upon God's word and, and just enjoying the, the silence in which sometimes they had a special awareness of God's presence. So this in no way diminishes the importance of coming together as, as God's people, but it's almost as if God has been compensating in coming to us as we've prayed, as we've focused on God's word, as we've waited upon him in silence. People of all traditions have shared the refreshment that they have received, even despite the restrictions that have been placed upon us. So we learn from, from Anna the importance of engaging with God on a personal level. And finally, the fact that Anna was willing to share with others what she had gathered in her experiences with God. We're told that she, was, she became aware of this little group who had appeared in the temple, Mary and Joseph and the baby. She was drawn to, to that group. She heard the, the prophecy of Simeon coming up to them at that very moment. She gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Anna has heard Simeon's prophecy concerning this child that he's holding in his arms. And Anna will not be satisfied until she has shared with others what she has received from Simeon's prophecy. And that's something that I think we should focus upon very clearly, friends, as we face the challenges, the unknown challenges that lie before us in this new year. What Anna is doing is taking what she has heard from Simeon and using it to encourage others that God is doing something special in the midst of his people and it's connected with this child that Simeon is holding in his arms. This is an encouragement to people of a like mind that God is with his people and is moving them forward according to his good and loving purpose. There's something in that for us to, to gather to ourselves, friends, and it's all about encouragement. It's about taking what we know about God and encouraging one another. That imperative comes up time and time again in, in Scripture, and particularly in the New Testament, where we're called upon to encourage one another with God's Word. Now, 
That is something that people are particularly gifted in. We, we know about people who were known in the early Christian communities. They were known to be encouragers. They had that gift. But there's also a general call in the New Testament for people like you and me to make an effort to, to encourage one another. Find it in, in, in Hebrews chapter 3. There's a couple of verses there, 12 and, and 13, where people are called upon to have this positive relationship with one another, to build up, not to bring down, but to see in our brothers and sisters in Christ people who need to be encouraged in the faith, especially in days of challenge. Now, this might not necessarily mean the gentle arm around the, the shoulder. Encouragement can be a stronger thing than, than that. Think of the, the athlete and the coach thinks that he or she needs to up their game a wee bit. And so they're, they're called upon to, to press on in their, in their training, to give more so that they can be more complete in their performance. Anna took what she had heard and experienced and used it to encourage one another. The importance is that it was positive, seeking to build up brothers and sisters in Christ from the inside out. And that surely is something we need to aim for in the year that, that lies ahead, friends. So much that's, that's uncertain, so much that might be challenging. But will we be faithful to the call to encourage one another, as Anna did in the temple, to those who were close to her. Let us pray. God, our Father, you find us today as a people seeking to find a way through days of restriction, days of confusion, days of questioning. We long for days when we feel more like ourselves, Days of the handshake and hug. Days of gathering for fellowship, entertainment and sport. But we are glad that we can turn towards the God who revealed himself in Jesus. The one who knew mourning, crying and pain. But who cherished within himself a vision of a new order of things. When everything that cause, cause, causes a shadow and human experience is banished. We thank you for those we have known now at rest, but who were faithful witnesses in the midst of a broken world, sustained by your promise of resurrection and life. We pray that you would help your church throughout the world to live in this hope and to fulfill your call to share it with the nations. Help the nations to see that even brutalizing conditions and heartless ideologies cannot destroy the hope we have in Christ. Help our nation to live with appreciation of those involved in healing, in keeping the peace, in responding to emergencies. Help each one of us to be ready to support the sick, to comfort the bereaved, to confront injustice, to follow every impulse to do the good and loving thing. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus our Lord. And hear us now as we say his prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We sing together in the bleak midwinter.
now may you go forward in faith into this new year and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>